Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Welcome to the UK Stocks I'm Buying June 2023 edition and this is where I go through the UK stocks that I have been buying and selling. There has been both of them in the last month over the last couple of weeks. So this is going to be from the 1st of May to the 1st of June and this is just to share with you guys all the moves that I am making and just keep up that transparency. So hope you enjoy the video. Let's get started. And as always, if you do want to see some more exclusive videos from me after this video, then join the Patreon. We post two exclusive videos a week. I will be dropping a stock request video on there on the weekend where we'll be taking a look at free stocks. If you want some free shares, join Trader 2 with the link in the description. You can get a free share worth up to £100. Also, we are very, very close to 14,000 subscribers. If you guys get me to 14,000 subscribers this weekend, I will drop a live Q&A session on the main channel for about half an hour. So if you can get me to 14,000 subscribers, there is your reward. But let's get stuck onto these stocks. Starting off with the ones that I've sold. So I did sell my shares in Barclays. So you might have seen in the last time we did this a month ago, I said that I have bought Barclays, but I'm gonna keep it nice and brief. The reason why is because when I recorded that video, I had recently just sold Barclays. So it was a bit of a quick in and out of Barclays. The reason why is I was quite happy to hold Barclays. I thought it's gonna be quite a steady performer. And uh, also it has a very solid dividend yield. But the problem is, is that on the US side of it, there was a stock crashing really hard, which was PayPal. And I was like, I really need to start grabbing up some capital from somewhere and start buying this dip in PayPal when it started crashing as well. So the reason why I really sold Barclays is nothing to do with Barclays. It's just that I thought, okay, I've, I'm buying more into this kind of finance space and I don't really want to have too many finance stocks. And also I want to keep my positions. Another reason as well is that I was also buying quite a few positions and I don't want to have too many positions. So I wanted to reduce the amount of positions I have, but also have the capital to go buy PayPal, which I did. So um, that was the main reason for selling Barclays really. So yeah, that's the one that I did sell. Um, I think I only made like a two or 3% profit on the stock. So yeah, nothing at all really to be fair. Um, but getting on to the stocks that I've been buying. So Jet2, I did buy some shares in Jet2. Uh, the reason why I bought some shares in Jet2 is that I look at the share price at the moment and it's been really flat really since the big recovery in the CV times. And uh, now the company's actually performing in my opinion above the CV times and uh, the share price isn't really reflecting that. And then when I look at the dividend as well that it could potentially hike up, I look at the value I mean, it says 16 times earnings here, but actually when you start looking now at the profit they're generating, this is actually, we'll look into it in a second, but this is actually towards like 11 times earnings for this company. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna have to buy some shares in here because this is a really good company. At the moment, travel is still really strong. You'd think with the environment that we're in, this weaker environment, people would have gone, oh, you know what? We're gonna pull back in our holiday spend. But nothing like that has happened. Everyone's still going, I'm still having my holiday that I have every year. And the uh, holiday's still been really strong in this environment. And when I look at the likes of Jet2, Jet2 without doubt is the best budget airline in the UK. It's doing things totally different. It has a very good reputation. You're getting maximum money for what you're spending here. And um, you know, you look at the reviews of Jet2, there's no wonder where you're seeing all these companies start struggling, like Tui for example. Jet2 are absolutely smashing it. They're just taking on more and more spaces on the runway. They're opening up more destinations, flying into, using more airports, flying to more destinations. They're just growing rapidly. And that's because of how well they are reviewed. They are, as you can see here, they were top rated airline in the UK uh, recently. You know, if you ever fly with Jet2, I think it's the only one that I, you, you would normally say airlines is not a good space to touch. And I wouldn't normally touch an airline, but when you look at Jet2, you know, you wouldn't say there's much loyalty, but for a lot of people I'm hearing is you would choose to fly with Jet2 over everyone else. And that's actually a little bit of loyalty where you actually go, you know what, for the money I'm spending, the experience I get, and I won't get that much hassle with delayed flights, etc. Jet2 is who I want to fly with. And uh, that's, that's really good to see. And then you look at the recent earnings. The recent earnings were really good. They upgraded the guidance, um, which was obviously really good to see. You can see here that they are now ahead of where they were for summer 2022, which is really good. You know, you, so, you think you would see some weakness and it's even higher than where we were last year. And also they're gonna provide their full year guidance very soon. You look before the CV times when they're doing 111 million in profit. You look now, the company's on the verge of doing 286 million in profit. And you can see here previously they were at 3.5 billion in revenue. And right now we're gonna see probably around about 5 billion in revenue. You talk about a company that really capitalized from the, co the companies that struggled 
John CV situation, this is it. He's really capitalized on all the companies that have struggled and opened up more lo locations, taking their runway spots, and it's absolutely smashing it because of the great reputation it has. And like I was saying there, you know, 286 million, we're talking about a company that's gonna be what, round about 10, nine times earnings here? And if you look at on a forward earnings, that actually is forecast to go to 336 million in profit. And uh, same again, you're gonna see over 10% revenue growth once again going forward. And it's very rare to have a company like this. It's very rare to have an airline that is doing these sort of numbers. It's a credit to how good performing it is. And I think sometimes people ignore this just because it's an airline, but you look at the numbers. So, so good. And uh, financial health wise, it's pretty solid for a, a, a airline as well. You know, 72% debt to equity. Obviously it's not cheap buying uh, planes, but you can see here they sit on 900 million in debt, but they're sitting on 2.8 billion in cash. That's very healthy for an airline. And also the potential that they did dividend as well. You know, they started really starting to hike up that dividend, as you can see here, before the CV times. And that dividend should start coming back now. And we could see a massively growing dividend as well as they grow that profitability. So, yeah, I think Jet2 is one of the trend breakers where you'd say you'd avoid an airline. It's honestly, you know, this is obviously, as you can see in the financials, performing so well. So, uh, yeah, I think that you look at it, the, the share price being stagnant for so long, it uh, looks like a quite an attractive opportunity, really. The next one is JD Sports. So JD Sports has been another stock that I've been averaging up on. Uh, you know, Jet2 was a stock that I owned, and uh, I was actually up over 100% in Jet2, and um, I just keep averaging up and averaging up on that position. And JD Sports is exactly the same. Um, a stock I bought in the CV times, and uh, I could have been up over 100% on this position, um, but I just keep averaging up, and it went really high above the old CV prices uh, and then since then it's actually been dropping a little bit and had that little bit of recovery but since February time the stock's actually been giving away it's, it's been giving away 16% of its share price and I don't think it's really anything to do with uh, JD Sports it seems like a lot of what's causing the pain in JD Sports Sports share price recently is Foot Locker. If you actually look at Foot Locker, they had a massive nosedive the other day and the stock was down over 40%. And this was, uh, they were saying, uh, weakness that they're seeing. And I think people just assume, oh, JD Sports is gonna be exactly the same. But it clearly, when you look at their financials, it's not. And I'm looking at this drop recently that it's having because of uh, Foot Locker. And I'm thinking this is a, a really good opportunity to buy more JD Sports because it's dropping because of another company. And you look at itself it's doing absolutely amazing and jd sports is really focusing now on it's dominated the uk market as most of you guys will know but it's now focusing on the international europe and especially into north america north america is a big big market for it to go to so if that works out that should be really good now if you have a look here you can see that the company on the recent report very good revenue growth absolutely amazing gross profit was down slightly and i mean obviously this is with a lot of the financial pressure that was going on and um, obviously a lot of this accounts were for 2022 so this should be some gross margin expansion going forward as well and um, they just the profit before tax was actually up but and um, there were some adjusted items and um, actually when you look at the operating profit and profit for tax it was a little bit lower but obviously that is just one off and that's why if you look here at jd sports it looks a little bit skewed at 54 times earnings but it's not really proper earnings at the moment so i won't be using that one off google that's why it's always important to actually check what's going on in the financials but when you get into the report, you actually see how good things are going. You can see here that the organic sales were 12% of the head of the prior guidance, which is obviously really good. And they said here that what was really key, trade in the second half of the period, particularly in North America, was uh, really strong. Now, obviously, that goes against what we've just seen, the, the fact that JD Sports was dropping because of Foot Locker. Foot Locker dropped because of weak sales. JD Sports seems to be pulled down because of them. And then you look on their recent earnings, and JD Sports directly said there that their North America strong was America North America was really strong for them so it's like well why are you getting punished so it, exactly it's just an absolute crazy drop here uh, they also announced a partnership which we saw earlier with Nike uh, which is obviously really good to see them uh, having a strong partnership with them uh, you can see here that they also in the new financial period you can see that the sales were actually up more than 15 percent so that is obviously fantastic the sales are still being really strong they also set out some longer term targets in the next five year, which was still to continue with double digit revenue growth, double digit market share in key regions and double digit operate margins and cash generation from operating activities of 1 billion per annum as well, which is obviously really good to see. And then we look at the financials here, you can see that little dip that's going on the profitability at the moment. Um, but once that little 
one time cost is out you can see here we go back up to uh, that's why it's important you know the doing a hundred at the moment the profit is kind of skewed because of them charges you know 142 million in profit we're going to go up to 700 million profit and that's why when you look at that point of view then you go well actually when you look at that the company is actually only trading like 10 11 times earnings so you're like okay you know you're getting a company that's going to grow uh, aiming to grow 10 percent a year 11 times earnings even grew it in that you know really tough period of time as well uh, you know 11 times earnings for this company that's aiming to do uh, you know nearly 100 million potentially uh, 100 billion uh, 1 billion sorry gotta get my numbers right 1 billion in profitability in the next five years it look it, you know you're talking nearly seven times earnings that's absolutely insane you know driven by that that us growth here and uh, obviously you know look at that for track performance really good in the last decade uh, financial health wise they're pretty solid on the balance sheet as well uh, you know they hold around four 4.3 percent debt to equity uh, they're sitting on around about 1.6 billion in cash that's a really healthy cash balance and um, a bit like jet jet 2 really they didn't really prioritize the dividend too much but i can really see them starting to hike up that dividend more and more if they're generating that amount of cash as well and i guess that's probably why insiders are really starting to load up the the shares at the moment and thinking um you know they they're seeing things where the financial of the company is performing very well but the share price isn't reflecting it so a uh, really attractive one there um, legal in general, I'll keep this one nice and brief. Um, very easy company to kind of understand, really. Uh, the stock had a major dip because of it went basically because of ex dividend day. It, it paid its dividend. Obviously, a lot of people jumped in for the dividend after they qualified for the dividend. A lot of them j dumped the shares off, and I was like, well, that's that's crazy because you're still going to get the dividend in a few months' time. Uh, and I think. To be fair, you could argue that the legal and general shares are a little bit undervalued, I would say, at the moment. Uh, I would say they should be maybe a little bit higher, not too crazy high, because obviously it's a very, uh, you know, basic, not great, great growth stock, but the dividend at 8% is obviously really attractive. And I thought, you know what, at these sort of levels, I'm going to get even a higher yield. So I did pick up some shares once it went X dividend day. Six times earnings, 8% dividend yield. Obviously, most of you guys will know, uh, offer a lot of finance services, investments, pensions, retirements, insurances, very steady away business. And uh, mainly, obviously, I'm getting it for the dividend. Obviously, it has a great track record of paying that dividend, should carry on paying the dividend. Uh, only pays around 51% of earnings out to shareholders, so it should be okay, I think. And also in the last two months, there's been a lot of people inside the company. As you can see, I've zoomed out even further. Look at this long list. It's getting even longer. A uh, long list of people that have also been inside the company picking up these shares, which obviously uh, makes me even more confident. Cakebox. So Cakebox has been, um, obviously, we saw Cakebox have an absolute crazy rally through 2020 into 2021. Uh, since the time frame, the stock is absolutely created. Um, the reason why there was a couple of account issues at the time, which um, they have resolved and they did get rid of the CFO issue. Um, so that's all fine. There were no major issues there. Uh, they did come out with a bit of a profit warning in summer 2020, which caused this decline here. So I'm seeing the stock here go from, you know, around about a £4 stock all the way down to £1.28. And they had a couple of account issues which they resolved and then they had a little bit of a weaker trading update. And yet, all these issues have been resolved and yet we, we're sitting at a price for this company that is, uh, you know, below the IPO price, which is absolutely crazy to me. 10 times earnings, 6% dividend yield for this company. Obviously, most of you guys know, cake box, they open up these stores, you can go for birthday cakes or just a single slice of cake. I also really like the little kiosks they do. They do these little kiosks maybe in supermarkets. I think that's where the growth is going to be uh, or in... Um, Shopping centers as well, uh, you know, these little kiosks, obviously lower overheads and, you know, people going past them all the time. Um, obviously, in birthday cakes, you're always going to get a birthday cake for someone. And also, cake in general, you're just going to treat yourself. Great profit margins on uh, the, the business as well. And like I said, you know, you look at the recent financials and um, they're, they're, they're doing well. You know, even in a really tough economic environment time, you know, you look at the second half recently on the new trading update. Revenues for the year up 5% year on year, like 5% year on year on this trading environment is unbelievable. 5% growth for a company paying a 6% dividend yield and a 10 times earnings is bonkers. And you can see here they mentioned about the material cost and reduced freight. This is also going to start coming back into the company in the next 12 months as well, which should really help them massively. And uh, yeah, I mean, just look at the, uh, the the growth of this company in the last few years and uh, the profit they are doing. Now, there has been a little decline. The profit margins did go down slightly, obviously, with the, the cost going up. But also, they did reinvest heavily into their fleet of trucks recently. So that was kind of one-time cost as well. That's kind of bringing it down at the moment. But um, I mean, obviously, at the moment, we should see them hold on to this level of amounts of profit 
5% growth a year. I mean, I always factored in 4% of growth, so obviously that's obviously really attractive. I mean, balance sheet wise, you know, there's uh, it's 8% debt to equity, which isn't too bad at all. Um, obviously, a 15 million market cap company, they're sitting on 5.7 million cash, which is very healthy. Dividend wise, I don't really see them cutting back the dividend at the moment. It's pretty well covered because obviously, uh, there's 64% earnings payout, and that's on obviously the one time cost of all the trucks at the moment as well that are being reinvested in. So, I, I would expect the dividend to be okay. Uh, ownership wise, as well as that, you know, when this ha stock has been dipping, the insiders, especially Suk Shamdel, um, he has been rapidly buying these shares, uh, as you can see here, and also another director as well has been picking up the shares. You know, one pound twenty-two, one pound thirty-nine. So obviously, he thinks the stock is is quite cheap at the moment. Um, obviously, that's roughly where the the price is still right now. And uh, also, the big thing as well is you know, is, is CEO, it's founder led. And uh, obviously, he as well owns a good chunk of the business at 25% as well, which is obviously a really good chunk to be owning. The next one's Forterra. So this is a stock that I expect will probably be painful still for the next six months, year. So I am being cautious of that. I'm not going all in because I think it could still be painful for a while for this one. And you can see here, they uh, had a dive when the CV situation happened. They had a bit of a rally up and then they're giving it all back. So basically, they're kind of the same levels in the time of the CV. And the reason why is because they are a brick maker and obviously are building products uh, producer. And obviously, with a weaker environment, everyone thinks construction is going to slow down. Sometimes earning 7.83% dividend yield is probably going to slow down that dividend a little bit because of the impact it is having. But I think in the longer term, there might be a slowdown at the moment, especially in like the housing market, but it's going to rebound, especially that when you look at house prices will fall and are starting to fall. You combine that with, we have a shortage of houses massively. What's going to happen is in a year time is that if interest rates stabilize or even go down, houses are cheaper. That's going to cover the gap that we had on the increased interest rates and because we're so short and the housing market is going to be so pent up for a year because of the high interest rates, the housing market's going to have another boom in a year or two years time and then Forterra are going to really benefit from that as a obviously supplying all the products. Now obviously as well they're making really good investments they've just built up a new brick factory and obviously when the housing market and the building market does rebound these guys are going to benefit from it because they made all the right investments during this kind of slump in the market previously they've got a very good track record going forward they should obviously start benefiting from the new factory profit should go back up to very good amounts as well and, and grow at really good rates the dividend like i said potentially could get cut but when the profits start coming back and the revenue comes back i think that we should see this stock go back to a seven eight percent dividend yield so obviously that's you know that's nearly the average of the S&P return alone. Never mind the share price that's been beaten down because everyone's thinking about this construction and housing market crash at the moment. So I would expect this to kind of go back to these sort of levels. You know this two high two pound three pound um, this, this sort of range. I reckon we could see that sort of share price. Combine that with the fact that you'd be picking up at 8% dividend yield. Like, I, I just think that's really attractive. So, yeah, I did pick up a few more shares in a Forterra. And the last one on the list is a new stock. Well, I say new stock. I used to own it. I sold it. I bought back in. I bought back into AlphaWave. Now, obviously, most of you guys know I sold AlphaWave. The reason why I sold out AlphaWave is I was very worried because they suspended the shares. The audit did not sign off the financials, so they had to suspend the shares. And I was like, oh... One thing that's always made me worried about AlphaWave is the management team. Do I trust them? What they're saying that it's only a short-term issue. I thought I'd sell. Now, what happened is AlphaWave were telling the truth. Uh, they said it was going to be a short-term issue. They resolved it. The shares came back on trading in a week's time, and uh, that problem was resolved. So that gave me confidence that they told the truth. Um, also, they reacted to this. They get it's not good enough that our shares got suspended. So they did get the CFO and uh, gave him a shove and got a new CFO in. So that's really good. There's an issue. The accounts should have been sorted. They shouldn't be suspending the shares. CFO, that's not good enough. You're out. Get a new one back. Get a new one in. So that's a really good move as well. That's really built up my confidence a bit more now for where the fact that they said that this was what's happening. They told the truth got rid of the CFO, came back online, that is very good. Now, there's still a few issues around AlphaWave, and sometimes there's a bit of cloudiness that does go on in the business, and that's why, once again, I'm keeping it a bit of a smaller position. I'm also very conservative on the area that it's in. I don't have the best knowledge that AlphaWave's in, and because of that reason, I keep it in a bit of a smaller position. But I wanted to buy back in because of a particular reason, and that is that 
Previously, AlphaWave obviously made a good chunk of their money from IP. The likes of selling it through to Taiwan Semiconductors, which semiconductors should still do very well going forward. But the big thing that I want to be really getting in for is the custom silicon. This, in my opinion, could be major, and this is because of the AI boom that's going on. And AlphaWave and their acquisition of Open5, they could actually see themselves produce custom silicon and this could actually really be massive in the AI boom. This could actually potentially let them go and compete with the likes of Broadcom and Marvell. And I'm looking at the likes of NVIDIA, I'm seeing their guidance and I'm seeing their guidance because of the AI boom in the back half of the year and how they blew numbers out of the water. I was looking at the likes of, um, oh, Seeking Alpha with their paywall, how annoying is that? Um, Broadcom and how they were lifting their earnings up. And I was looking at the likes of Marvell and the guidance that they're giving, uh, it's gonna be absolutely massive as well. And I'm thinking, well, all these companies are saying AI, AI is gonna help them, the guidance is absolutely booming. I've got no exposure in this space. If AI is going to be as big as what people are saying and as big as NVIDIA is coming out and saying and all these other companies, I need to have a play in here because this could be a massive growth drive in the next few years and I have no exposure. And the only one that I look at that has a relatively reasonable valuation is AlphaWave. It's the only one that I look at and go, I can see their valuation actually being okay. And if they can hit the growth that they're saying they can do potentially in the long term, and if you look at the valuation now at 828, uh, 8, 828 million market cap, you know, this company's trading around 20, 20 times earnings. If you actually look a year down the line, the company's actually trading around 10 times earnings. For a company that is growing really well, and I think they could potentially come out and say like, oh, we're actually gonna be even better now because of the AI boom that's going on. We could even see these numbers maybe hiked up looking at the likes of Marvel and Broadcom and if they're gonna be competing with them now. Now I've got to say, I weren't a big fan of the balance sheet. The balance sheet had a little bit of weakness in the recent update, um, but it's still okay. You know, just sitting on 210 million in my cabin and does still have cash on there. That was a little bit of a disappointing that I did have. But insiders keep buying and buying and buying, which is obviously a really positive sign at the moment. And when I look at the leader and the CEO of this, you know, when I look at Tony here and his experience in here, and you look at what he had done previously, uh, you know, he's co-founded three semiconductor IP companies. Um, he sold one in 2007. He was also the founder of V Semiconductor. Um, he's, he, he sold that to Intel in 2012. Um, he also used to work at Intel from 2012 to 2017. I'm looking at Tony's track record here and you know what he's done in this semiconductor space and the and the company his the companies he's sold the companies he's worked for and I'm thinking do I want to bet, bet against him you know when I look at his track record and, on this sector and he's got a company like here in AlphaWave with a custom IP and the growth that potentially could happen in the next few years would I want to bet against him in this space in the next few years I, I wouldn't I probably would want to be on his side you know so yeah I thought that I'm gonna buy a bit, bit in here because I do need to have some exposure to the AI situation. This one looks like a relatively cheap valuation. Granted, there is some red flags around the history of it, but you know, when I look at the management team and the track record they do have, and I look at the valuation, the growth they could deliver with this custom IP, uh, or custom silicon, I've got, I've got to own a bit. Even if it goes south, I've got to own a bit, just so uh, if it was to have a big massive AI hype, uh, or, or rally should I say, not hype, um, a lot of it is hype, but uh, it looks like some of it is actually deserving now. Um, I have some exposure here, so that's AlphaWave. Hope you enjoyed the video as always, guys. Smash the like button if you're new around here. Make sure you subscribe. Hope you have a good weekend. See you in a bit.